Welcome to Memphis in May, the Super Bowl of Swine. We were honored to be asked to be in the Home Depot outdoor cooking area where we cooked up all sorts of delicious treats and fed the hungry crowds. One of the highlights was having our very own Captain Ron asked to give a demo for the crowd. Sit back, pop a cold one, and enjoy as the captain teaches the fine points of caveman searing steaks. How's everybody doing today? All right, look at us, Memphis in May. How cool is this, everybody? For those of you that don't know, which is probably most of you, my name is Ron Dimflemeyer. I go by Captain Ron on Instagram, Facebook, and everything like that. Please follow. There's no charge. Um, I am here so proudly representing Fogo Charcoal in the Home Depot area. Um, this is like a really great honor for me, and uh, it just means the world to each and every one of you sitting here watching and listening and hopefully paying attention. Um, hey, how about this setup? Huh? I don't know if it was anybody's here last year, but how about this? Let's give Home Depot a, a big round of applause, all right? I mean, this is like just second to none here. And, um, it, you know, it's just so organized. It's so great to see so many people. You know what's nice? There's so many people here from competing companies, competing things. And you know what we all do? We all get together, give each other a hug, and give each other a big, big hello, you know, and a slap on the back. Because I love the way that barbecue brings people together. Uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing. You know, you want to have a good time? Light up that charcoal. And I guarantee your neighbors are going, what do they got going on, you know? And when you're doing it, you should be lighting Fogo charcoal, by the way. <laughs> so... A uh, little brief history on me is that um, the, the old pandemic didn't work out so well for so many people. It worked out phenomenally well for me because I was starting my kind of my barbecue career and I was doing it as a hobby and my daughter said, hey, you should start an Instagram dad. And I said, you should start me an Instagram daughter. And she did. And um, it just sort of blew up. I don't know, you know, and I started working with a grill company and then when the pandemic hit, I was uh, a traveling salesperson. I was gone almost three weeks of the month on the road. Uh, traveling on airplanes two, three times a week um, with nothing to do with barbecue. And then when the pandemic hit, obviously airline travel shut down. Nobody wanted people in their houses. So um, Sebastian from Fogo Charcoal reached out and he said, hey, you know, you live close by. You, we like what you do. How would you like to make a couple videos for us? Said, man, oh, man, are you kidding me? I would, like, that's an incredible honor. Sure, it's my favorite charcoal in the world, and I would love to do that. So we made a couple videos, and I don't know what happened, but people seem to like them. So... If you're not tuned into the Fogo Charcoal YouTube channel, I do all of the videos on the channel. We release every Sunday at 10 o'clock. It's always a good time. Uh, we do a lot of ceramic cooker um, things, you know, and whatever color grill you're cooking on, it's kind of the same method, all right? So, uh, so that's the one thing. Now, a little bit about our charcoal, and I won't bore you too long with all this stuff. I'll get into cooking in a minute, but it, this is kind of a cool story because our charcoal is, actually comes from El Salvador, and it's a little bit different. It's not mesquite, it's not oak. It's a wood called Inga wood. And what they do down there is, down in El Salvador, they grow coffee beans, but they have to shade the coffee plantations. So they grow these trees called Inglewood trees, and they grow fast, real fast. So what we've done is we've contracted with the coffee bean plantations down there, and when they take all their trimmings, when they cut down their trees and replant them, we take all of that wood and we make our charcoal out of it. It's all made in adobe huts that are actually built by us. We have like 75 of them down there. And in our yellow bag, which is our super premium, we actually have an assembly line of people that actually grabbed out the big chunks for the, for the big bag. So our yellow bag is our low and slow smoking charcoal. Black is our grilling and smoking charcoal. And our other one is our green eucalyptus. But in the big bags, okay, that is one piece of charcoal right there. Our super premium is kind of filled with pieces about this big. You get a lot of it like this. In black bag, you're gonna find pieces like this. So it's a really great burning charcoal. Um, we just cooked in the Florida Outdoor Expo for three days. I cooked 27 hours and still had a third of a bag of charcoal left. So let's talk about caveman searing. Does anybody know what caveman searing is? I do. Yeah, I know you do. Grill that over there. Thank you, Faye. Well, why don't you tell us what that is, Faye? It's whenever Ron grills something. Whenever Ron grills something, yes. <laughs> they call me Captain Caveman. Does anybody, you know, I know that you know. Who else, anybody else know what it is? Yes, sir. Yeah. Correct, correct. So what it is is when you take your protein and you cook it directly on the charcoal. When I say directly, I mean directly, not on a grate right about or anything like that. Sir, thank you for answering that question. I really appreciate that. So you, sir, have won a box of Fogo Fire Starters, and I'll try not to let the feedback go so bad. Thank you very much for participating. This is a um, interactive thing here. So as I'm going along here, if anybody has a question or a comment, except for the tall guy in the middle, please let me know what it is, okay? Yeah, simmer down, sir. Um, Craig McPherson, over here. By, that was the barbecue Buddha, by the way, right there. So the protein we're going to work with today is strip loin, all right? Uh, we work very closely with Demkota Ranch Beef Company, 
and they provided us with this absolutely magnificent and beautiful strip loin. Now, you've had New York strip steak, all right, and everybody says, what's your favorite steak? It's a ribeye, not mine. Mine is a New York strip, a good quality New York strip. And the first thing when it comes to, if you wanna have a good meal, start with as good a quality beef or meat that you can afford to buy, okay? Whatever that is, okay? Whatever the one that you can afford to buy is, that's what you should buy, but buy it at the top of that range, okay? If you can buy prime, buy prime. Um, usually, I used to buy um, our strip loins at Costco and get the primes. Our Demkota Ranch beef choice is actually better quality to me, for me, than, than that. So we, we're very proud to work with them. Now, this is a strip loin. I've started trimming it off here a little bit. What you want to do is you want to take your meat and you want to leave some fat cap on there. It's kind of like a brisket. It's going to come with this big, thick fat cap. Now, I've done some trimming on this, but there's some loose stuff on top here okay, that we want to get off. You want to be very careful when you're using a sharp knife and always use a sharp knife. Did you guys know that more accidents happen with dull knives than with sharp knives? Yeah. Yes. He's like, yeah, that sounds like the, that looks like the voice of experience. Sir, you also win a box of Fogo starters. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, participation counts around here and I won't hold that Redskins jersey against you at all. Okay. <laughs> Fins up, go Dolphins. Um, but anyway, so yeah, but, it, but it's true. More accidents happen with dull knives than with sharp knives because you're forced to put pressure on it and that's when you get slips. Also, the other thing, always cut away from yourself, never towards yourself. So I'm just gonna get, I kind of did most of the work here already earlier. But you wanna take that fat cuff and bring it down to about an eighth of an inch. Similar to the way you would do a brisket, you wanna do the same thing, about to an eighth of an inch. Hi, Tim. About an eighth of an inch. Bama Grill Master, everybody. Um, so you wanna have something like that, all right? Because what's going to happen is fat equals, I don't have a box of starters for you all, but you did great, let me tell you. That was fantastic. All right. So when you, got, when you got your meat like this, it's all set to go. Nice and trimmed where you want it. Now, what I've been doing here all weekend long is I've been serving our steaks with our Fogo rub. Our Fogo rub is actually black in color. It's made with activated charcoal in it. All right. Does anybody know what doctors use activated charcoal for? Yeah, you're absolutely right, ma'am. You also win a box of Fogo Fire Starters. I'm going to deliver these to you in a little while. Somebody come run it to you, okay? Um, but yeah, absolutely. So if you ingest some poison or you're, you're, you're sick and you're having bad stomach problems, activated charcoal is the first thing I'm going to tell you to take because it soaks up poisons, all right? So everybody sees this and says, oh, it's pepper. Oh, it's burnt. It's not. The color is meant to be this way. We're a charcoal company, all right? So when we season, season liberally. Don't be afraid, all right? Coat this thing up, all right? So I'm going to go top, bottom. And here's the one thing that people always forget to do. The most overlooked part of the steaks is the sides, okay? Don't forget the sides. You eat that too, right? Yeah, so no giveaway on that one. So there's, we want flavor on every single part of it, all right? You want it to be flavor packing and never lacking, to quote a good friend of mine, if you know who that is. Woo -hoo! But anyway, we're going to keep going here and season this baby up. And again, I'm, this is how I do it at home too. I'm not doing this because I'm up here, um, but I season them liberally because I want flavor. Now, the other part of this is when you're seasoning steaks, you're seasoning pork or anything like that, a lot of people want to take their steak right out of the fridge, put the seasoning on and throw it on the grill. But that, that's, I mean, you can do it that way and you're going to have a decent meal. If you want to have the best steak possible, take it out an hour before, all right? Season it up, put your seasonings on it, let it sit out on the counter, let it come to room temperature. It's going to do a couple things. The most important thing is that, this is going to sound weird at first, but by having that seasoning on there, it's going to draw all the moisture up out of that meat. Wait, Ron, I don't want that pulled up out of my meat. Well, hold on, folks. What is going to happen now is after a little while, it's going to seep back down into the meat. You know what it does? It grabs all that seasoning and it pulls it back down into the meat. So now the center of your meat is going to have flavor just like the outside. Maybe not as strong, but you're going to have a much more flavorful steak. So if you let your steaks rest and sit out for about an, at least a half an hour before you do it, you know, if you only have 15, 20 minutes, that's all right too. Hi Chuck. You know, that's a great thing. So building flavor is how you want to do this because quite frankly, I can take out a decent piece of meat, put some seasoning on it and serve it to you. It's going to be pretty good. I don't want it pretty good. My, my girlfriend will tell you, I'm a, a maniac. I want to serve the best piece of meat that I can serve every single time out of the gate. It's what we do. All right. So this folks is what a fully seasoned New York strip loin fat cap on looks like. Okay. Sexy like Lexi, right? I just, I just quoted you a minute ago. You weren't here. Are you dead here? All right. So what I'll do now is, is, you know, depending on what I'm cooking on, we've got one hanging here. I don't know if you can see it. We've got one hanging here over live fire. So that's going to cook for about eight or ten hours. But because I love you all so much, and my good friend Barbecue Buddha does also, we work together, and we already prepared one for you. All right. Now, this is a fully cooked 
New York strip loin. So that big long thing turned into this, all right? Um, it's beautiful. We cooked it to about 115 degrees. Um, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic because we did that. We coated the whole thing, we let it sit out, and then we let it smoke slowly, okay? We didn't cook it on this one, but that's what it is. Now, we're going to get to the fun part now. Now we get to play with fire. Oh, 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 oh. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to cut it into steaks. Now, you can cut it however thick you want for this because it's pretty much already cooked through, all right? All we're doing is we're finishing it off. So I'm going to take, I'm going to cut a thin one off the end here, all right? And then we're going to cut a little bit thicker one here like this. Okay, you see how tender that is? One stripe through, right? Beautiful. I, it's, it's hard in its light, but it's really nice and pink here. It's been sitting for a little while. Now, for the caveman sear, I can go ahead and just throw this right on the flames. And like what, like what my friend out there said before, is that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop this directly on the flames. But I want maximum flavor again. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to flavor the inside. Flavor the sides just like that. Give it a little pat. Because if meat has to be good, you got to do that. It's the, that's the rumor that I hear anyway. I don't know. That's what Instagram tells me. So, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so there we have one whole beautiful about, I don't know, inch and a half thick steak here. Now, what we've done is we prepared our fire here. All right, we've got this going. Uh, let me take this glove off. Kind of move this around. Now, when you're doing caveman searing, you want your coals as hot as possible. That's really important. You don't want them just lit. You want them as hot as possible, glowing gray red. That's what you want. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a number of reasons for it. And the first one is probably the question somebody's going to ask first. What's the first question somebody's going to ask when I put my steak right, right directly on the charcoal? Like, you've already answered one, sir. Anybody? Will the charcoal get on my steak? Oh, that's a great question, Chuck. Thank you for asking. Uh, <laughs> that was not a plant, by the way. But no, it's not. What happens is that I kind of equate it to a, a, a chicken cutlet in a pan. You put your pan on the stovetop and you drop your chicken cutlet on. It's going to stick, right? Well, the intense heat automatically in about 30 seconds kind of releases it. If you just let it sit there, it's going to release it. This kind of works much the same fashion. But what this is doing is everybody says, oh, it's just for show. It's actually not just for show. By doing this, you're taking the intense heat directly from the charcoal and you're actually caramelizing the, the sugar, the natural sugars and enzymes in the meat. So instead of like adding, you know when you, when you sear a steak and you got that beautiful flame going below it and it gives that nice black char, that black crust, you're really not going to get that kind of a char on here. But what you're going to get is you're going to get this beautiful brown rim that's going to go around it. See, it didn't stick at all. Now we got some char, but there's this beautiful brown line around the outside edge here. Okay, and that's what we're looking for because that's the caramelization that we want. It's taking the sugars and the enzymes from the meats itself and intensifying the actual flavor of the meat. So instead of adding flavor in it, we're taking the natural flavors and juices from the meat and building flavor that way. I don't know about you all. Look, I love a seasoned steak. I don't ever marinate my steak. Some folks do. Whatever you like, that's what you should do. You know, that's how you should cook it. But to do it like this is a really great way to do it because, like I said five times in the last two minutes, is that you're intensifying the actual natural flavors of the steak, okay? So that is a fully cooked steak. You can see no charcoal stuck to it, no ash. The color that you're seeing here is all strictly the rub that I put on. Our, like I said before, I want, so I wanted to let you all know that our rub is black in color because when I take this over, I'm like, ooh, there's all ash on it. There's not. If there was, there would be gray all over. Like, there's one little speck of gray. Okay, we're good. Um, there, was, there was literally one speck of gray on there because of the intense heat. It almost kind of, sort of in a way, builds a barrier. Now, the other, port, the other important part to this is that when you take your steak off, all right, an important thing to do, I don't have one here. What I like to do is I like to have a pan with a rack in it, and then I set that on that. Because when you put a steak right on the cutting board or on your countertop like this, the bottom of it is still steaming. That's, that's a piping hot steak right there. We literally just talk it off the fire. I mean, really right off the fire. And now, right now, this steak is actually kind of continuing to cook and kind of steam itself. But just as you want to do that with steak before you cook it, the other thing you want to do is let it rest afterwards, okay? The reason being is that as that steak is cooking, the muscles and everything inside the meat, they're expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. So, you know when you take your steak off, you throw it on the cutting board, and you're like, yeah, let's eat, and you cut it open, and there's juices go all over your cutting board? If you let your steak rest for five to 10 minutes, I, I say 10 minutes, some people get in a little rush. Minimum of 10 minutes, really. You're not going to lose a lot of heat. It's going to be a great temperature. But what it does is all of those muscles and all of everything inside that meat re-relaxes. Okay? This way now what's going to happen is that when you cut into your steak, you're not going to have a pool full of juices on your cutting board. They're going to remain inside the steak. Everybody wants a nice juicy steak, right? That is the key to a juicy steak. All right? When you go to a great steakhouse, that's one of the things that they do. 
They let that steak rest. They do not take it off the grill and bring it right to your table. I guarantee you. Yes, ma'am. I don't tent it. No, because if you tent it, you're going to keep that heat in. You're going to continue to fit. So what I did here, okay, this one you can see. We cook. We cook this to 115 degrees internal temperature. Now I did tent this. This I can guarantee you, if it cooked to this, done this at that time, was more than 115. But I wanted to keep it warm, you know, and 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 keep it ready for this. So I go to 115. Let it rest, then I sear it. The nice part about this is that because this steak already rested, it's been resting for about a half an hour already, I can cut into this already because it already had that rest. All we did is sear it. It was already cooked. So here's the real, the real test. This is going to tell if I'm invited back next year or not. <laughs> Are you guys having fun so far? Are you enjoying this? All right. I can't hear you. Yes. Yeah. Shameless self-promotion, Captain Ron. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut into this beauty and see what we've got. All right, uh, la, 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 la. here we go. All right, first things first, we're going to go right into the center of that thing. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Nice and pink in the center, okay? Again, it was cooked a little bit, so if I let this sit for another couple minutes out here like this, like remember before when I cut it open, it looked a little bit whitish? That same one, look at it now, okay? Because it kind of sat out and got exposed to the, to the oxygen and kind of gained its color back. But... That is, folks, that is caveman searing, all right? Um, it can only be done on fogo charcoal. No, but you do want to do it on lump charcoal. You do want to do it on fogo charcoal. If you do it on briquettes, you're not going to have, it, you, are, you will tend to get a little bit more ash that's going to stick to it a lot. The lump burns a lot hotter than briquettes, all right? I'm not here to take anything away from briquettes at all, but the lump burns hotter than briquettes do. I don't know where that one came from, but... Um, but that's, that's what you're gonna get. So if you're doing it with briquettes, you might not get enough temperature to really get a great proper caveman sear. And you're gonna get a little bit of ash that's gonna stick to it. All right, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna caveman sear one or two more steaks. And I'd love if y'all would just come on up when they're ready and just give me a second to put this on. Switch knives here. Okay. We'll sear these babies up. Actually, maybe I can get Sebastian to come sear, sear these while I serve y'all something. Ladies and gentlemen, he probably didn't want me to do this, but Sebastian, Sebastian, the owner of Fogo Charcoal. Everybody say hello, give him a hand. And I gotta tell you, I, I, um, up on stage here, I wanna thank Sebastian because the opportunities that he's given me are just unbelievable. And if you get to know him, just one of the best all around people you ever wanna meet. He's gonna yell at me later for that one. <laughs> but I'll drop him on there since I got the gloves on already, all right? All right, if anybody wants to come up and take some pictures of the steaks on the, on the coals themselves, please feel free to do it. It's a great picture. and. Uh, and if you do like post it anywhere on Instagram, anything like that, please feel free to tag me. Uh, tag Fogo Charcoal, tag Home Depot. All right. Um, so we're gonna serve some of this beautiful steak up right now. Um, I wanna thank you all so much for attending uh, and watching this. I, I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be back here the rest of the afternoon. We're, we're gonna be serving these out here. And um, I, I'm just having such a great time and I can't say thank you enough. And I could probably stay up here for the next four hours and talk, but I won't subject you all to that. All right, but um, again, thank you all for attending. Come on up and have some steak and uh, peace, love, and happiness.